Hello, everyone. I'm Matt. Welcome to Telling Tales, where we tell mostly dark and slightly spooky stories via the medium of tabletop role-playing here on Twitch. But you knew that. You're probably watching it on Twitch. Or if not, maybe on our YouTube, where our VODs are stored. If you don't know where either of those are, look in the video description below, and it will point you to the other one, because you're already on the one that you're on. Is that clear? Good, yes. Um, hello, John. John is our stream manager. He's going to pop on now and say hi. Uh, hi. He's often, hi. He's often um, throwing pictures on the screen or shuffling people around or going into chat and banning spammers and various other tasks. How are you tonight, John? That I'm looking forward to the, the banning of spammers. Obviously, I don't Who want wouldn't? spammers in our chat, but I do like pulling out my ban hammer. Or the, the banning of spammers. Yes. Yes, that's much better. Um, thank you for your service, John. We appreciate it. And um, goodbye. Um, so as well as down below, uh, finding the links to Twitch or YouTube, you will also find the links to our social media, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. You'll find links to our Patreon, should you want to support us. We've got some juicy extra backstage content that has gone live this week, which is admittedly of the vampire series we run rather than this one, but still. Um, or you can simply support us by uh, subscribing to us here on Twitch because we are now an affiliate as from, oh, well, it was a while ago now, three weeks or so ago. So isn't that all wonderful? But without any further ado, let's bring on our players who are going to give us a bit of a rolling recap of where their characters are in the dark fantasy world of Simbaroom. And we will start with Mike, who plays Antom, our resident theurg, priest, and all around holy man, just like Mike himself. How are you, Mike? Pretty good. Pretty good. Yeah. Pretty good. Excited to play a role. To play a role in this game. Yeah. Um, so, uh, where we uh, picked up with Anton last time, he was away from the party um, as uh, circumstances came to a deadly climax back in the town of Thistlehold. Uh, but he had information that was rather important for the others to learn. Um, but he did not realize the importance of it himself. Why not tell us what happened to change that? Yeah, so he was uh, putting his feet up by the fire in the Glimmer Van Inn, uh, some miles away from Thistlehold, and uh, was interrupted uh, in his evening by the arrival of some of the Thistlehold town guards. And uh, one of them mentioned um, that uh, Steo and the rest of the crew were running around with Balmello, and that uh, was a cause for concern for our Anton, and he. And, and why exactly is that a cause for concern, Mike? Because Balmello is not who he seems. Uh, Anton has reason to believe that Balmello uh, is, in fact, a chap called Adarko uh, who killed the real Balmello uh, and is now taking on his, his form, his appearance, and is up to presumably some pretty nefarious stuff. That so. sounds about right to me. Um, so yeah, on that note, um, Anton fled as fast as his horse could carry him to uh, to the gates of Thistlehold. But Correct. in Thistlehold, further events were unfolding. Uh, let's bring on Sam, aka Askarai, our changeling ranger, uh, who at this point, uh, he and the rest of the crew had sniffed out a potential location for the serial killer known as the Flayer and uh, were heading to, to that location, the Blue Moon Trading Post, or former Blue Moon Trading Post, to try and see if they could finally track down their quarry. What did you discover there, Sam? Uh, nothing nothing good. We uh, we kind of half snuck around the back to get in the, the only window that we could find. And um, it went okay. We got in, but there was a a body in the corner which we assume to be Garrick, who we know is the first victim because mm -hmm. they'd found his skin they'd assumed it was with his body but we believed it was not so we found his flayed body um but as we approached well as i approached it 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 uh kind of reanimated and began just wailing on me with uh, a chain hook and a crowbar something crowbar, like that yeah nothing that you want people to hit you with that's for no. sure um I, I mean i cordially prefer them to not hit me at all with anything but yeah, yeah. true 
sure. as these things go. Yeah, but we we eventually put him down after probably more of a struggle than uh, we quite could have uh, used at that point. But yeah, and then we I think from that point we kind of heard voices down below mm -hmm. and uh, moved a crate out of the way to to reveal some old stairs that seemed a lot older than the town itself and certainly the building. Older. Yeah. Um, and then you uh, clambered downwards into uh, the, the dark underground lair of the Flayer. And why don't we bring on um, Chris, a.k.a. Steo, our sometime town guard and full-time curmudgeon, to um, let us know what you found down in that lair. Well, entering spooky town, um, it was a, we find a smaller kind of square room, which was clearly a temple of some description. Um, and in it, uh, tied to a wall, was um, the person who we assume was, was the victim of, of the first copper crown and a changeling who was uh, desperately trying to complete the a severing ritual to cure him of, of his uh, terminal transformation um, unsuccessfully. And I recall um, I had initially expected to go in there guns blazing, but slowed down a bit. And then when we discovered that both gentlemen had been in contact with the crown, uh, we just got fighty. Um, we put down the uh, changeling after a record number of field hits, field rolls to hit, and um, unfortunately, just at that time, almost with dramatically accurate timing, um, the abomination on the wall finally slipped into Danger Town and transformed into a, a very nasty thing whatsoever, and uh, yeeted me across the room into what must be a couple of broken ribs uh, and most of my health points. Uh, so I am on the very verge of death. Mm -hmm. um, and then, um, in the uh, in the brief interim of this, um, even more horrible chaos happened. Uh, perhaps in part due to the fake Balmello being alongside you. Who can tell? I know who can tell. L, aka FNAR, our final player, uh, our barbarian slaughter machine, um, and yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, firstly, I don't know if that rhyming was intentional, but there was a hell of a lot of rhyming in my intro, and I was very, very appreciative of it. I didn't even realise. If an air player, who can tell L? You know, oh, it's great. Well, yeah. I, I, I guess I'm a poet, and I didn't even know I was rhyming those words. Exactly. <laughs> so, yeah, um, obviously, you know, we're, we've, we're, we're coming to the end of our, our combat, and, uh, well, we hope, and Barmelo's cronies um come down the stairs and he's got the crown because and and we're we're, we're, we're thinking this is all dandy because you know we're taking yeah, down the big nasties and yeah, absolutely this is this is all going to be fine and um sadly it turns out this is not the case as um Baumelo kind of makes his not baumelo known uh shouts to his cronies that we are all um tainted by corruption too far to be redeemed and we should just they should just kill us all mm -hmm. um and we ended uh, and also yeah he fled past them with the crown so yeah. now we have a a rogue rogue baumelo baumelo running about with the crown and absolutely um, uh, and you managed All of to our you managed players to... on about three HP, and he set yeah. fire to the building. Well, he does seem to have done that. You managed to cut down the abomination, and you you have dealt a couple of really horrible blows to the ogre who's in charge of uh, his henchmen. Um, mm. But you're also cu currently outnumbered. You are also quite battered. And yes, as Anton finally arrived outside the Blue Moon Draining Post, he did see the uh, the false Baumelo exit the building and scurry off into the night with smoke pouring out of the doorway. Um, so with that in mind, shall we pick up right where we left off? Anton, you're stood there on uh, the street of Haliband's Ring. Um, what are you going to do? Um, I'm going to yell, Baumelo! And see, uh, while running towards the, the trading post and see if he responds to that. Uh, he definitely kind of pauses and looks over his shoulder and then 
carries on running. Um, you're not entirely... Tell you what, um, why don't you give me a um, resolute roll? Just a standard one. Can do. I make it just. Okay. Um, you can hear two things from, from the distant figure as... Uh, he is running off. One is a kind of high-pitched cackling, and the other, which seems to emanate from him in general, and not kind of from his mouth, is an odd uh, kind of low, grinding voice, um, repeating things over and over again as he recedes into the distance. Um, you're, you don't know what language it is. You don't know what words they are. And it, it does not sound like the voice of a mortal man to you. Okay. Can I, I, I will try again and yell out of Darko this time and see if uh, I get anything else from him or if he's, you know, changes anything. But, like, my attention is probably more focused on the trailer. Sure. Mode, so. I take it as you're doing this, you're, you're approaching. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Running yeah. as fast as I can if I can see it's on fire. Uh, as you, you call out a Darko, you see a pause in the run of the figure. He looks over his shoulder again and then dashes off into it kind of turning off the road out of view. Right. Get into the Blue Moon Trading Post as fast okay. as possible. Oh, and maybe I should do a roll for protection, actually, before I get in there. That um, seems like a very valid thing <laughs> to be doing. Uh, I, am I can see, I can see it's on fire, right? <laughs> <laughs> let, let me let me attempt to roll first um uh, so i'm rolling against resolute i think for my yeah i think it is yeah uh for my blessed shield um yeah sorry everyone and i do not make it okay um can anyone remember whether we determined whether we trigger corruption um, for failed attempts or not. I can't remember where we landed. I think we decided that we won't. I think we did, and I think the general advice from people who were giving us advice on it was that we should, but we thought, nah. Yeah. <laughs> so the idea is that you're changing the natural order of things, and that's where the corruption is coming from, but I think if you don't manage to do it, then why would you be physically corrupted by it? That's that's my thinking, anyway. Um, so you know what? No. Um, I'm okay we, with that. we could even swing it because obviously there's the element of um, if you have the uh, the skill, the talent that is associated with your type of mystical power, then you don't gain corruption from learning those powers. But we could also make it that that's also a split. So that if you have theurgy, you don't gain corruption from failing to invoke theurgy powers. But if you were trying to invoke a, a, a wizardly uh, power or a sorceress power, then you would. Something like that? I don't know. Something to think about. Um, in any case, you've dashed into the uh, the trading post. It's, much as I described it from last week, a large, em mostly empty barn-like uh, room. In the center of it, uh, you can see that um, several large boxes have been heaped kind of into a pile um, randomly in the center of the room. Uh, and that pile is on fire. So, I think my internet's yeah. gone down. Can you guys hear me? We can hear you. We can yes. hear you. Okay, you okay. Sorry. Sorry. You it, had had it had a temporary moment there. Sorry. No Please repeat that because I didn't there get it. There is a pile. There's a big pile of boxes in the middle of the room and they're on fire. Okay. Um, can I see uh, anyone that I know or anyone that I, I don't know around there? Um, why don't you give me a vigilant roll to see? Oh, oh vigilant, my old friend. I make it. Okay. Um, these these boxes are piled pretty haphazardly. Um, the things you immediately notice about the room is there appears to be a very bloody, horribly rotten body in the corner, in like the far left corner. Um, you don't recognize it immediately, which I suppose is, is a good thing. And there also seems to be a trap door under the pile of burning boxes. Okay. Yeah, I will... Um... Uh, try and kick them away, I guess, as, as much as I can. Um, sure, absolutely. Um, well, while you start doing that, 
why don't you why don't you start by making me a well make these rolls and just remember the results, okay? Sure. So why don't you make me a strong roll? Um and uh if that fails, can you make me a resolute roll? Sure. And then just okay. remember the results of those, and definitely if they're ones or twenties. Uh, and then while you do that, let's go downstairs and find out what's happening in the uh, ancient uh, ruin underneath the trading post. So, uh, John, can we have that initiative order up, please? Um, I believe we need these three, uh, these three chumps here, plus, uh, yep, the ogre and the henchman. That is wonderful. And I can't think why we would have stopped mid-initiative order last time. I don't imagine we did. Mm. So let's pick up again. <coughs> now, I'm going to set the scene. Correct me if I'm wrong. Um, Ephenea, you are dueling the ogre, I believe. Um, Askarai, you... I think Askarai and Steo are basically facing off with the other three henchmen. Is that correct? Does that sound right? I... I think that's about and Steo right. Steo had kind of stepped in front of Askarai to try and give you room slash time to um, do your do your bow work, um, but that realistically, you know, that's that's <laughs> probably not. Or, you you this round you could certainly probably maybe move away and fire at them, um, but unless all three of them want to hang around Steo, um, one of them will probably move to engage you. Um, and in fact, they're already engaging you, aren't they? So moving away from, would give a you a, would give them a free attack. Yeah, I'm rambling. What are you doing? Um, I think we'd already sort of started fighting, so I I'm not so. gonna not gonna move away. I'm just gonna try and knife one of them. I think some of them are injured. Is that and right? All, all three of them are injured to some degree. Two of them are qu quite badly injured, and one of them just lightly. The the one nearest to me that looks the most, the one that I can hit that looks the most injured, I'm yeah, going to try and stab. You, I'd <laughs> say you can hit, you can hit the two of them that look the most injured are the ones you, within within your range. So I, I'd say you can uh, aim for the one who looks the most injured by all means. Um, that is an attack roll at a plus two. Okay, nice. I made it. Got a three. Fantastic. Um, uh, give me a damage roll. This is a D6 and a D4. Yeah, you get your is your D4 from faint. Yeah, I got yeah. a nine total. Nine total. Oh, beautiful. <laughs> um, uh, the basically as Steo kind of like <laughs> stumbles forward um, to desperately try and fight them off you. Um, the the three of them kind of turn their attention to him, thinking. This, you know, this old man looks like he's nearly dead already. This will be uh, a nice quick kill before we move on to the archer. Uh, and as that the one that's most wounded does so, you know, uh, her attention moves away from you for a split second, and that's all you need. Um, you weave in um, past another one of them, slash quickly your uh, blade across her throat. She staggers backwards um, and kind of turns to face you, and then uh, her eyes widen in surprise as uh, thick arterial blood starts spraying out between her fingers and she staggers back and collapses against the wall. She, uh, well, she's not dead right now, but she's going to be dead before this is over. So you can probably count her out. Um, next, we have, uh, do, do you want to, uh, if you wanted to move, it would still be a disengage. One of them is still engaged with you, so it would yeah, still be a disengage. I I won't move. I'll, I'll stay where I am. You good? You good? Okay. Uh, Ephenea, how are you going to do in this battle against the ogre? Oh, you are on mute. It seems. Hopefully, better than the ogre, but you know. We'll so see. far, so um, far, you have been. <laughs> I'm not using the cursed dice tray this week, so. Um, good, but you are still using the cursed using... sword, so. I am still using the cursed sword. Uh, fantastic, uh, but I'm not uh, going to uh, do I anything that up. requires me to roll for corruption. I have now read the rules about corruption more thoroughly. Um, if you go over your corruption threshold, mm -hmm. I thought that that was kind of the thing that means you either temporarily or permanently lose control of your character. That's not true. That's if you go over your resolute score. 
yeah. with, with corruption. If you go over your corruption threshold, you get what's called a stain, which is a temporary, mm -hmm. roughly 24-hour long mark of corruption in some way, whether that's mental or physical. Um, yeah. So I just thought I'd let you know that part. There's a bit more to know, and we'll, we might talk about that later regarding whether you're going to keep using Black Gift or not. Um, but, yeah, just so you know. Just so well, you know. for, I think, for role players' sake, because I think she was pretty, like, she'd already, I think she'd used it once, hadn't she? The the Black Flame, and, like, she, she has, was yeah. pretty, like, she was gone. Like, not gone, but, like, she's pretty just... Yeah, you, you feel it's affected you significantly, yeah. yes. Uh, so I am going to use um, the uh, mechanic that allows me. Yep. I'm going to use the flame to let me get an extra D4 of damage on this yep. ogre. Go for it. Um, but yeah, obviously I'm going to have to roll a hit first. So what yep, was it? Absolutely. Sorry? It's a plus four. So. Oh, plus four. I think it was think 19. It, or yeah, anything, like anything yeah. but a 20 will do you. Yeah. yeah, I got a 17, so that's fine. Yep, absolutely. And give me them them damage right. rolls. So for you, is that a D D twelve and D twelve D twelve a D six and now and two D four. Two D four, yeah. Oh, oh yeah, and you all also need to roll a D four for a your D4 corruption for, for your extra yep. corruption. Yeah, indeed. So I'm j I'll do the damage first, then the corruption. Um, so let's see here. So D4, D6, D12, another D4. Wow, that's some BS. Uh, well, 10 damage on four dice. Yikes. Well, it's enough. It's enough. Um, you step it, like the ogre is already damaged. I, I believe I said you'd cut across his face and he has blood in his yeah. eyes. Um, he's backing away from you now and his. He's, he tries to put up a guard, but it, it's, it, it makes no difference. You heave around on him uh, with Black Gift and slice deeply into his chest, and he kind of howls and collapses to one knee, um, and then he erupts in Black Flame. Uh, he shrieks pitifully and starts rolling around on the floor, but the Black Flames don't seem to be going out. Um, the henchman facing... Uh, Steel and Askarai kind of take a step back and look over, and, and one of them sort of desperately uh, makes kind of carves the the uh, sign of Prios in the air as as they stare wide eyed at the fate of their uh, of their leader. He's he's dead within seconds, and he's just there, a kind of smouldering corpse on the ground. As soon as he's dead, the black flames seem to seem to dissipate. Um, we seem to have lost the initiative. Uh, should Thank I roll for corruption? Oh, because by you're removing. Uh, yeah. Oh, dare. Yeah, definitely yeah. roll your D4 cor for corruption. Will do. I mean, it's going to take you over the threshold, isn't it? Because you're... Uh, well, it takes me at the threshold. Ooh, well, that's um, a good question. Does it need to be at, like equal to? Or I have over? five, and I got five, and I got one added on my four. So now I've got five corruption, well, and you know what? My threshold is five. I'm pretty sure I can find the rules fairly quickly here. Um, one, well, yeah, I've got them here. So, uh, da -da, corruption. I think it, yeah, corruption threshold reached. Oh, uh, it says okay. so. Um, yes. Okay. So, um, yeah, you have a kind of feeling of uh, power running through you, kind of hot raging power you feel like you you could keep fighting and fighting and fighting for as long as it takes to destroy your enemies and you kind of turn to to glare at the remaining henchmen with uh, black gift still erupted in dark flame in your hands um steo you said you were the one trying to keep an eye on Ephenaea, so i'm going to say that you're the one who notices that Ephenaea's eyes have turned pitch black Okay, um, as per last week, it's <laughs> on my list of problems. Um, um, John's just popped in the chat saying I now have to roll 1d4 permanent corruption since I've hit my um, threshold. I don't think that's true. Cool. Is it? I'm happy to not roll d4 permanent corruption. <laughs> 
Uh, John says page 175. Yeah, that's one. Well, I'm on. I can't see it. Well, 175 is a is a is a illustration, but um, uh, no, I could can't see that. Uh, so no, yeah, there's a copy paste. Um, permanent corruption has suffered when a character's total corruption reaches the character's corruption threshold during a scene. One d four permanent corruption. Oh, but surely that means on everyone, but someone with a very high resolute, the first time they get temporary corruption, they will be permanently lost because. Like it's not going to be very much difference if you see what I mean. Like, mm. it's that's very rough. How about we just like house uh, rule it for this session and then figure it out next next session just to keep the RP going. That is crazy. Um, receives a permanent blah blah blah. When permanent corruption reaches the character's corruption threshold, the stigma disappears if the permanent corruption is reduced to below the yeah yeah yeah. Um. Okay. Well, I mean, it says it, so I guess we have to run that. Right. That seems really weird and snowball-y to me, but there we go. Time um, to die! Right, I'll uh, just roll that d4. Because if you, yeah, as you are now on five, if you roll four, that will mean your temporary corruption is now nine. What's your resolute? Um, my resolute is ten. I roll right. three. So, um, my, yeah. so is the permanent corruption plus the temporary corruption. So I'm on eight. I am corrupted eight right. out yeah, of ten. Yeah, you, de you definitely need to demarcate what's permanent and what's temporary. Yes, I, yeah, uh, I've, I've done that on my cool, uh, character cool. sheet. Yeah, yeah, because the temporary goes away at the end of a scene. So, um, yeah. But uh, just as a note, then, so if someone has, um, so yeah, if you'd had eight resolute, mm. you would now have lost your character from that that seems weirdly snowbally to me and like I, that means that any character below about 12 resolute can't reliably use a magical item which is that's a lot we'll talk about this we'll discuss this this has the scent of homebrew wafting all over it like a sickly fog so um regardless we are where we are um the henchmen aren't going to fight they are backing away from Ephenea, backing away from Steel and Askarai, and glancing uh, in an opportune fashion at the stairs. Uh, the stairs, which um, you're only just starting to notice, have small, smouldering bits of wood dropping down them. Oh, shit. Yeah. Um, Steo and Tom, uh, well, not and Tom, Steo, Askarai, and Ephenea, your actions are next. Um, Steo, are you are you kind of are you attacking them, or are you are you kind of trying? To, are you hoping that this conflict is coming to an end? Um, kind of the latter. Um, the lady who collapsed on the ground is is with my medicus. Can I stabilize her, or is she no, beyond no way. No rescue? Way. She's okay. she's already she's already she'll already be near death. Oh, uh, okay. Well then. Um, I'm going to stay on guard and kind of make sure Askarai is um, behind me as much as possible so we can get a range attack in if necessary, but okay. definitely observing just for a minute or two. Just kind of holding. Sure. Um, Askarai, what are you going to be doing then? I think I'm going to keep fighting. Um, okay. <laughs> in my mind, they've just seen... Uh, Ephenea, like, <laughs> do something which I have to assume they will think is a sign of corruption. So if they leave, uh, I'm thinking we're in uh, a, quite a lot of trouble. That's that is a perfectly valid assumption to make. <laughs> um, they've backed away from you. So you know what? Um, if you're going to keep fighting, do you want to take a free attack with your dagger first uh, as they disengage from you? Okay, that sounds great. Uh, Should technically already have happened, but you know, we'll be fine. Okay, I made it. I got a seven. So... Okay, give me a uh, damage roll, please. I got five total. Five total. Okay, yeah, you you catch one of them on the arm as they back off. It doesn't stop them backing away. They they're pretty determined. It looks like to get out of here, but get out of here without you. 
um, <laughs> without being killed, hopefully. Um, but they are still backing off. They're most of the way towards the stairs now. Are uh, if you want to attack again, you as your actual action this turn, you can um, kind of charge them and try and hack them with your dagger, or you could probably fire your bow from here. Yeah, if I can swap to my bow, I will swap and just shoot. Sure, it'll take you your your move action to swap, but yeah, go ahead. Okay. Are you firing at the same one? This is the more wounded one. Yes. Okay. Okay, I rolled a four, so I make it, and then this is just a normal D10. I got nine. Neat. Um, Real fucking neato. They... uh, they both kind of turn to try and charge up the stairs, and one of them collapses with your arrow kind of dead in the back of their neck, uh, and they collapse with a, an unpleasant coughing sound, and, you know, they're, they're dead. They might not know it yet, but they're dead. Mm. Um, and we go round to Ephenea. So the one that remains is desperately starting to climb up those stairs, Ephenea. Um, what are you going to do? He ain't making it far. Hope okay. If, uh, she can help it. Um, if I can help it, so sure, um, make an attack roll at plus two. Yeah, obviously my uh, kind of role play reasoning is I am just consumed by whatever corruption is is happening. Not completely, but you know, in, in, yeah, in yeah. the heat of battle, all yeah. I'm seeing is, is this is your red enemy and you're cutting them black, down. Yeah, and they're dying. Yeah. Um. So yeah, I'm gonna roll hit plus two. Yeah. Right. Um, you, yes, although you know what they're fleeing as well, so I'd say this is probably a uh, an attack with advantage where you're flanking. So, um, so you can actually take plus. What what is the extra plus to the flanking? Uh, da, 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 da. I think it's plus two if it's yeah. Advantage. It's an extra. So you've got plus four on your attack roll, and you'll get an extra plus one d four to the damage as well. People are on mute, by the way. Yeah, she's not going to ignite her flame for this because good, good idea. <laughs> um, that this this is clearly a weakling that she can deal with in one fell swoop. Mm-hmm. So roll to hit. Yep, um, I rolled a four. So cool. And then your damage rolls, please. And then an my extra, damage rolls. Extra d four as well. <laughs> right. Cool. Uh, maybe slightly overkill. 21 damage um, <laughs> um, <laughs> on this one poor, like, <laughs> bastard. I, I'm going to propose a, a bit of an action here for Ephenea, but feel free to say no. Um, uh, uh, I think Ephenea probably, um, in in the kind of pinprick of uh, aware consciousness that she still has, uh, is going to be carving her way past this one and then running up those stairs to try and catch up with Baumelo. Oh, absolutely. Sure. Um, so FNA dashes towards the stairs, gives one kind of sweep, great sweep of the great sword, and then leaps over the bisected remains of the uh, the fleeing henchman and starts kind of pounding up the stairs towards the burning trapdoor. And Tom, how did those strong and resolute rolls go for you? I didn't need the resolute one. Because I made a strong one, surprisingly. Nice. Um, and Tom, um, feverishly scrabbling at these boxes in fear of uh, what might be happening to his friends down there, um, uh, heaves them off. You kind of heave these burning boxes off the trap door, um, barely noticing. Like you know, you've got a little part of your robe is kind of smouldering, but you heave aside the. It's had a like a bolt drawn across on it. You heave aside the bolt and stand back just in time as um, a terrifying, horrific, flame-haired demon rises from uh, the the smouldering remains of the trapdoor, wielding a, a huge blade of burning black flames and sort of knocks you aside and then stands uh, in the centre of the, the, the trading post, uh, howling in bloodlust. Right. Uh, I'm going to shout at her to get her attention. Ephenaya! Sure. Um, why don't we have a, um, a resolute off? Sure. So, um, well, Mike's doing the action, so Mike can roll it. What What is your resolute there, L? Ten. 
10. That's just a straight up resolute roll then for you there, Mike. Um, or, you know, you can roll. You can 12, roll. Which, which is, Sorry. Which, which is a successful roll against my own resolute, but maybe mm -hmm. not against L's. No, that's fine. because It's okay. just because it's a flat. Basically, because L's resolute is 10, that has no modifiers. So right, got you, you just okay. make a resolute roll. Okay. Um, I was also going to give you the option of rolling your persuasive, but um, you did it anyway, so it's fine. Um, you kind of grab FNA's shoulder and just try and get in front of her and... and um, Scream her name. Uh, L, you're out of it. And Tom is in front of you. Um, the okay. flames, you don't even notice, but the flames on Black black Gift kind of drift away and uh, sort of dissipate into the, the evening air. Um, and Tom, you can definitely see FNA's eyes. They're still kind of marked black. Um, is it safe to say, and again, I don't want to make assumptions, but Steel and Askari are following up the stairs. Yeah, I definitely would have given Steo a look after FNA uh, <laughs> went off like that, but we'd, I'd definitely be following uh, close to sure. the um, I really want to search the room. Um, I don't know if now is the right time. So no, I'll, I'll head up. You smell now a lot makes, of smoke. It makes no sense to search a burning. Um, yeah, up, up, yeah, once yeah, you're up I'll top, Anton has cleared the burning um, boxes, but the other piles of boxes are on fire. Most of the building is is stone, stone held together by great lengths of wood, um, and that wood is now also catching fire. You think it's probably a very, very good idea um, to get out of there. Okay. Um, I will. I will bellow at the top of my lungs. Fire, because fire is very serious and mm -hmm. difficult. If you want to get people's attention, yell fire. Um, you come pouring out of the blue moon. Um, people are already kind of gathering in the streets, shouting for water. Um, yeah, shout. The the human cry in general is going up. Um, what of the four? What are the four of you going to do? I'm gonna uh, just check over the other guys, make sure that everyone's there. To kind of make a quick assessment as to who is the most injured, which I'm guessing is Steo. Ah, Steo. He's basically yeah. holding his guts in. Yeah. So I will support him and will hobble away to uh, the nearest point of safety. I think I'm still um, like, even though I've uh, calmed down from from my uh, corrupted blood rage, um, I I'm still kind of like riding that like adrenaline high from it. So mm -hmm. um, despite the fact that I took damage, quite a lot of damage, um, I'm just gonna just be like, right, I'm, I'm water fire, uh, put the fire out. This hold sure. is my home. And sure. I'm not going to let it burn the ground. Okay. So could we say then that perhaps the other three of you are kind of slumped against uh, a wall a little further down the road while Fenea is uh, desperately trying to help the water line get get this fire put out? Um, reasonable. Yeah. Seems like a good point at which Anton could make a Medicus roll on Steo. Um, I don't. I don't think. Uh, I don't think I will. I think that I sort of will take a look at his injuries and maybe make the decision to uh, reach into my robes and bring out a small vial and mm -hmm. administer some healing in that way. Sure. I mean, you Any can do one and then the other. I mean, I, I think that with, <laughs> yeah, I, I, I guess, yeah, I guess I can, I, I can yeah. do a, a medical as well as well, but like, so. I, I don't think that like, yeah, I don't think that medical, Oh. Some of that stuff anyway, oh. right? Uh, you don't think what? Sorry, we cut you cut out for a second. I don't think Medicus would, would heal it fully, so I'd have to use. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, but like anyway. you might as well do both. Is all I'm saying. But um... sure. Well, I don't make the Medicus roll, so that's okay, why. that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> um, so what? Uh, what was the mechanic for Water of the Dusk again? Is it? It's something crazy, like a D10 or something like that, isn't it? I can't. I can't remember actually. I don't think I have it written down anywhere. I um, think it's. Oh, uh, my gut tells me it's like a, a D10. I think we just did. We just role play it last time. 
But no, no, it, it's monster, definitely got but... a mechanic. It's definitely okay. got a mechanic. Um, and it's in. Um, See, I'm I'm looking it up, but someone's probably written it. Someone, no, they have. Um, hang on. Yeah, D10 is what chat says. D10 is what chat says. Um, let's just do a double check. But roll, roll me a D10 while uh, while we're waiting. Um, Ten. Ooh, that's exciting. Um, nice. But unfortunately, Steve is no longer with us. He's he's dead. That's Hello. it. I was too late. If, I, if only I'd made that medicus roll. Oh, <laughs> oh gosh. Um... <sighs> I'm sure he'll be back in momentarily. Oh, there we go. Um... Drops the side. Yes, it is one d four. It's pretty good. So it is a D10 that you heal, then? It is a D10, yeah. Nice. Yeah, in that nice case, Steo is good to go. <laughs> <laughs> but unconscious. <laughs> Sadly. Steo, you're good to go. Steo! Steo! Um, oh. oh, no. Yeah. All right, then. Well, okay. hopefully Chris will be back with us. But let's say that... There we go. Oh, there we there go. We go. There he is. There he is. The um, so Anton has just withdrawn a vial of the uh, the water of the dusk that I think everyone had believed he had handed back um, and uh, kind of soaks some some bandages and, and wraps Steo's wounds. Steo regained 10 toughness. What? <laughs> Thank you. Bittersweet though it is. You briefly lost consciousness, but you're back now. <laughs> the water brought him back. Back from the edge. Back it was some fantastic edge. role playing on your mm. part, Chris, to drop <laughs> out at the precise moment yeah. that uh, you became unconscious. All that tension. Well done. Um, yeah. Uh, so I would probably turn my attention to Oscar right now and see if he needs um, some healing as well. I, and I think that I can't do Medicus on him because I failed that, so I will... Uh, no, I think... Can't you do... You could do one Medicus roll per... Oh, one per person per day. Yeah, you're right. You're right you're In right. the interest of uh, honesty, I have had a Medicus roll done on me today. Um, you I don't have, know yeah. if people can do it. Or I can't remember what we decided. I think we, we decided, decided that different people... Like every person who can do medicus can get one medicus roll on you per day, but I think we also decided that it wasn't really the rules. But informally, we'd only allow one successful healing roll per instance of injury as well, because otherwise you just pile up the medicus on people and it doesn't feel right. Really well, I, I, it. I've certainly got some new injuries since you do that. have new injuries. So, um, so I think Anton Tom can go ahead and make a medicus roll for Ascari as well. Great. So I'm um, Effie's. Uh, Effie's working in the bucket chain, so I can't help her mm -hmm. right now. I, I'm getting my vial out again. <laughs> that, that's <laughs> that's how well that medicus roll went. Um, so... <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> and now uh, he rolled a one, <laughs> two. Sorry, that's after I. <laughs> that's double <Favoritism>. one. <laughs> <laughs> um, twice as good as usual. Um, yeah. Okay, so like, Askarai, you feel like the warmth spreading um, through the wounds that you have. Clearly not to the degree that Steo <laughs> has, because Steo is suddenly standing up again and looks significantly better than he did before. Thank you. Oh, please. we need to get to the guards. Baumelo has to die tonight. Well, I, I have some news on that front. That That's not Baumelo. Barmelo has died, and someone has assumed Barmelo's form. Prios is back. Uh, oh. the, 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 the being that appears to be Barmelo now, I believe to be a man called Fadarko, a, a soothsayer, experimenter in dark magic and Glimavan. And I believe that he 
was uh, involved with with Barmella. With Barmella was investigating what he was doing, and uh, I, I, I didn't witness this, but I found the aftermath. Barmello stabbed in the back, and a man appearing to be Barmello escaping to Tesla Holds. We must, we must be cautious. We've just killed one murderous changeling. We got to get to the guards like this. We, I, I don't think we're going to find them tonight. Right now, uh, we've got bigger problems on our hands. There's a thing on fire. Let's let's just get this to the guards first, and then and then move on second. Unless you think you can track him, Askarai, because. I mean, in the dark with all these people running around due to the fire, it's gonna be it's gonna be double hell. He he fled in, in that direction, but I that was some time ago now and he is fleet of foot. Got the bastard crown as well. Oh okay. Oh. We need to get Effie. Or whatever Effie is now. Uh, apologies, I need to vanish for one second. Uh, sorry about the lack of professionalism. Uh, I forgot to bring my charger in with me. My laptop is about to die. I can still hear you. I'll be one second. <laughs> sure. Just... Um, so, um, yeah. Also, yeah, Sam, you were saying sorry. Yeah. Just before we take this to the guard, please, can we not mention that the flare was a change thing? Yeah, sure. It's already hard enough in this town. Well, keep it vague. I know it might be, I don't know. Some of them might figure it out, but if we can just not confirm it for them, it might make things slightly easier. I mean, there were two murderous individuals down there, right? It, it's perfectly... It would probably be be very easy to just blame Gorak. I mean, yeah. he he's he clearly wasn't innocent. Okay, shall we? Um, can we? Ex do we think we can extract Ephenia from the from the water line? Yeah, Does like the like the, the flames are sort of getting under control now, and and Ephenia seems to have passed as much water as can be passed in, in a firefighting sense, um, <laughs> and uh, as. As you kind of go over to, to talk to her, uh, the you can see a group of guards approaching now, Dirac at their head. Dirac! Oh. He uh, strides over to you and says, what have you done to my town now, you lanky streak of piss? You've got bigger problems than me, mate. Baumelo, in Baumelo, he's a fucking walking nightmare. We need him killed. What? Whatever Baumelo was wasn't and whatever is is worse you're saying we need to bring Baumelo in uh done not in <laughs> he shrugs and says that's not my call to make though it is music to my fucking ears i'll take it to marvello sounds good i might take it to night pitch en enough of Baumelo though what happened here did you did you get the killer the flare is dead as as is his pet project as well, is that's a, that's a fucking relief as are most sure? of um, oh certainly if you want to go down to the basement you'll be in for a nice tour of symbaric temple ruins that have seemingly escaped the Ordo's grasp for the last 10 years he um, kind of turns and scratches at his beard and, and stares at the kind of simmering flames and turns around and looks at you all and says all right then well you lot go on home i'll catch up with steo tomorrow you'll get your pay don't worry music to my ears night pitch is matching it as well ha huh, twice the Word music came to down. My ears. clearly clearly you acquitted yourself well with him fucking lucky you look could be worse thanks mate all right. And he kind of waves for you to go off. As you walk off, he just 
grabs Theo by the elbow, pulls him back and leans in. That girl, keep an eye on her. Got you, boss. All right. That, uh, my friends, is the end of this story arc, um, which was called The Mark of the Beast, uh, the second part of the Cop Copper Crown trilogy. Um, we had planned for this eventuality, folks at home. We knew it was going to finish early tonight. So what we have for you are some lovely vignette scenes um, of things that happen before the next uh, story arc picks up, um, which me and the players have collaborated on coming up with ideas for. Um, so that's that's what we're going to do. Um, in terms of um, um, like XP and stuff like that, um, you guys can feel free to take uh, two XP for what has just for, for this session as a whole, uh, that's one XP for the fight and just one XP for finishing the story. Um, cool. So that's okay. nice. I think you've got some to, to spend as well. Um, so what I'm going to say is before uh, next week's session, if you guys can either... Obviously, you don't have to spend the XP if you're saving it. But if you do want to spend the XP, spend the XP because the next session will pick up a couple of months after the events in this one. Um, so you want to kind of... Uh, uh, if you want to progress yourselves, that seems like an appropriate time. And also, have a think about what you'll have done for those two months, um, because that might come into play. But all of that aside, um, what we're going to do now is we're going to hop through these vignettes. We're going to take L's first, because L wants to um, hop off stream after that. So we will take L's, and I believe uh, L's vignette is, let's say... Um, a couple of days later, um, I believe the setting for it is the Witch and Familiar, the uh, the tavern that you've all been in uh, attendance of frequently. Um, was there some kind of element, and this is where my notes don't help me because evidently mm -hmm. I didn't take good enough ones. Um, I know we were wanting a certain way to go with the scene, but was there something you wanted to be, you wanted Askarai there at the beginning of it or something like that? Um, am I, am yes. I imagining that? No, you are not. Um... You know, I'm not imagining that. It's just to help Ephenia be less slightly ignorant. Right. Yes. Yeah. Um, do you want either of the either or both of the others to also be present? It's entirely up to you. So let me think. Um, if you want, if you yeah, want no, reasons I mean, for them to be there, I mean, you could just have them there to be. To we could be, be having a celebrate. Yeah, no, we could just be having a celebratory drink in the witch that and familiar, good. like given everything that's like this is a hey, you've, we're alive. Yeah, you've maybe taken two days to heal a bit, to calm down a bit. Um, don't don't be too worried about your toughness levels and stuff like that because you're gonna. Re before you need to use them again, you're going to be all regenerated up anyway by the next session. Um, oh. But uh, it's worth noting things that have changed. Um, L, your temporary corruption will be gone, and your yes. stain, the, the the black markings on your eyes, uh, will now also be gone. That only lasted oh. about a day, um, but certainly long enough for you to be aware of it, because you weren't immediately aware when it happened. But um, no. You are aware now. But yeah, you're in the Witch and Familiar. You're having a celebratory drink. Um, and why don't... Obviously, L takes a bit of the lead in this scene because uh, it's where... Um, it's the scene she wants for, for FNA. But you guys, go. Roll play. Right. <laughs> Just act natural, you know. <laughs> it's fine. Um, all right. So um, uh, FNA is um, going to... Uh, start by um generously buying uh drinks for everyone because you know it's um it has come to our attention in the days uh since this has happened that she may have lost control just a tad and become very very scary um <laughs> so she kind of feels a little bit like she's got some making up to do so um uh buying buying a round in for everyone um and yeah kind of like you know as they like uh, as she brings them over uh, to the table um she's gonna kind of like you know look look around at everyone she would be like well never thought i'd see the day when i was sitting at a table 
drinking ale with a priest and a changeling, but here we are, I guess. <laughs> uh, finer companions. I couldn't ask for. Thanks. You're a bit tipsy. <laughs> I've Have been a... working with you for ages, Steel. <laughs> you know, Cal, you're part, part of the foundations at this point. It'll take more than three days to heal that hurt. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, it look, certainly makes a change from when I first met you in here. Yes, well, you know, I'll I'll admit I had my reservations. I'd never seen one of, you know, your kind before. How do you how do you like to be referred to? is it just changelings? Is it do, do I just is there any way you guys like what how does that work? I don't really anyway, yeah, I I I was new to this, but like <laughs> but you know, we fought many a battle like side by side now i like i would trust you with my life and have done um well, and i just yeah probably easiest for you to just call me askari but i'm a changeling if you need to talk about what i am then that's what it is maybe best not to mention it in front of too many others if possible though um so, so i'll just kind of lean in somewhat conspiratorially and just, so is that like is that why you wear the mask, or do you just like it? It's a part of it. The mask helps with a lot of things. If I, uh, you know, if I don't wear it, everything, every dealing with everyone in this town seems about twice as difficult as it needs to be. But the mask is useful for a lot of things. I mean, as a changeling, I can look like a lot of people if I need to be. So if people don't know my face, that just makes it all the all that that much that much easier for me. Wait, so could I have met you before and just not known about it? <laughs> Possibly, although I, I think I remember. Yes. <laughs> I am quite memorable. <laughs> it must be said. Um, and I'm just gonna like you know clap him on the back quite. I I do like by the way that at the end of this particular story arc, Askarai goes, yeah, I can change shape and look like anyone I want. Because <laughs> when know, has right? that ever caused trouble? <laughs> problems. <laughs> um, so yeah, I'm just gonna like clap him on the back and you know me quite forcefully because it's me. Don't quite realize my own strength. Just gonna be like well. Anyone ever gives you trouble for being a changeling, you just send them to me and I'll I'll have a word with them. You'll what, cut them in two. <laughs> <laughs> Look, right, <I'm> Steel. <laughs> that was that one time, that two times. A, <laughs> a rich, powerful voice behind you, somewhere near the uh, the fire in the bar, starts to uh, sing. <laughs> At Jackad's heart, the arrows fell. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> uh, Blackhawk is here, and he is staring directly at the four of you while performing uh, the uh, the tale of... it. What should we call this song? Shall we call it Jackad's heart? What do you think we should call it, Chris? Um... Let me just check my notes. <laughs> <laughs> I was like half expecting that. Let me just bring up a random word generator. <laughs> oh, no. Chris definitely knows what this song is called. It's called The Siege of the Heart, and it's exactly 0.7 verses long right now. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Um, nothing to do. A total siege of the heart. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so, uh, yeah. Fortunately, we do not have the finished version yet. But uh, Black Hawk's song is, um, yeah, he's he's singing about the siege at Jackard's heart, and he's, uh, it's it's very very much embellished. Oh yes, yes, <laughs> very much so. Um, and, embellished uh, from Ephenia killing the main bad guy in one hit. Yeah, it lasts it lasts it. multiple verses in this. One. Um, <laughs> But there are there are many lines about uh, the uh, noble and shapely red-headed barbarian warrior queen. 
In fact, it, it barely mentions a priest or a changeling or a grumpy town guard at all. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> oh. Um, this so, isn't uh, creepy, yeah. by the way. This is what Elle asked for. I want to make that clear. <laughs> Absolutely. I think... My, my words were, I just want to see him with Blackhawk. There should be lots of awkward flirting, I believe. Um, <laughs> um, he, he is literally, like, he is literally roaming. As he plays, he's kind of roaming around very near you and he's kind of keeps looking at you every time he sings about, uh, he sings about you in the song. So, yes, that is happening. <laughs> so, Everyone um, else, this is quite a busy evening at the Witch and Familiar, uh, which I, I'll describe again. Just uh, I know you guys know what it is, but it's, it's a kind of barbarian inn which is coated in kind of moss and uh, hangings of skins and, and trophies. And uh, a large barbarian man is kind of like working away behind the bar because there's quite a few people in, and people are generally enjoying Black Hawk and tossing him a few coins, uh, but also um, uh, completely oblivious to, to this all happening. Uh, and the other three of you are, well, I'm assuming a mixture of embarrassed and uh, horrified. Um, I'm, I'm deeply amused, head buried in palm. <laughs> I think I'm praying. <laughs> <laughs> Prius, give me strength. <laughs> Prius, smite this man down. Um, <laughs> Just make a medicus roll on him, it's fine. Yeah. Um, <laughs> But yeah, I'll uh, you know I'm gonna uh, kind of not not particularly socially aware. Um, I'm going to you know buy him a drink once he's stopped uh, singing my praises, um, and just be like, "Come, come, sit with us." I'm sure the others would you know love uh, to, to have you here. Um, uh, as, the, as, yeah, as your you... company's been missed. As you as you invite him, uh, he he kind of while you wave, he grabs he he kind of gently grabs your hand and kind of uh, kisses it lightly and says, "Of course, milady," uh, <laughs> and uh, gives a kind of florid bow and uh, kind of goes to place his uh, his loot down uh, and then comes over to the table. When he comes over to the table, how many of you have already left the table? <laughs> <laughs> that was an actual question, I'm assuming. Oh, yeah, um, it absolutely was. I was, I would assume <laughs> that some of you are. I, I think, I, I think I at the, f the first signs of intimacy <laughs> happening, uh, I, I definitely would have made an excuse to, to go to the, the bar and um, sure. get another small well, you're, you're still yeah. staying here, right? So you could go up to your room just, you know, <laughs> oh, yeah, <laughs> true. <laughs> for the evening. <laughs> so sure. I, I, I do recall being told to keep an eye on the young lady, so I'm just going <laughs> to... Just hang around. But I'm definitely... <laughs> Definitely trying to not look at what's about to uh, anything that's trying to happen. I mean, hopefully, it's not about to happen in the common room of the inn. <laughs> just so, on the yeah. table, just right in front. Um, <laughs> well, if you're, if Steo, what, what is, how is Askari responding to this? Think, is he going to have a, a nice conversation with everyone or is he, is he Ask also Ryan, bowing out? He's going to just, uh, <laughs> drink up basically as uh, <laughs> quick as he can and then once he's finished he's going to sit at the bar as he pretends to get another round basically sure well how about how about we say that um and contradict me if i'm wrong uh and tom makes his excuses and retreats to his retreats to his room for the evening <laughs> Unless Black Hawk is in the same room or an adjacent room, in which case no, no, he's, he's not. Just take a walk <laughs> you around the town. You're not sure whether he's staying here or not. No, you have okay. your own room. You and Asker okay. have your own room because of Fine. what you did in the in, in the inn. Um, sure. uh, Let's say Askari and Steo uh, head up, make their excuses and kind of head over to the bar. And Steo, you can watch things happening so that FNA doesn't like suddenly like wrench Black Hawk's arm off and start exploding into an abomination or anything um uh so you can keep an eye and you two can have a, a a quiet you know drink among the the throng and uh let's just say that black hawk and effinaya 
sit and have a drink together and we can draw draw a draw curtain, curtain over that. the rest of the evening. And perhaps <laughs> Elle can can determine at a later date any any interesting events that might fall out of the rest of the evening. That works for me. Because uh, I, I have roleplayed with Elle a fair bit, and I know Elle quite well, and I know that Elle will have been very up for a hilarious, flirty scene, and right up until the moment when Elle had to be in the hilarious, flirty scene. <laughs> oh, I, I was already, like, I was going red at the, like, I was like, oh... Oh no, this is more. Oh I no, it's actually more. happening now, even <laughs> that it isn't, but it actually is. <laughs> Far but more. But it than isn't, but it is. Yeah. yeah. Sure. Like, I'm, I'm happy for there to be, like, you know, like, I'm happy for there to be actual kind of romantic, like, subtext there and that to be noted. But yeah, yeah. I don't we actually don't want, want to, be to like... have to role play that out. You know, roll roll for missionary. We don't we we don't want that stuff in there. So um, I have been in a I, room where people have done the whole roll. Some people do, do that, and it's just like, oh no, <laughs> it, it's embarrassing stuff. Um, embarrassing. So I would just like to highlight at this point, by the way, I don't often read out from chat, but for this, I'll make a definite exception that uh, L has described the end of this scene in chat as fade to black hawk. <laughs> Very well done. Fires. Yeah. Um, yeah. Cool. So that's uh, that's FNA's vignette. I think we're fine with that. Uh, and it, it kind of uh, sums up the uh, the immediate fallout of um, of the story as well. And also, you know what? Um, I was umming and ahhing over. I have a little bit of an epilogue to read out for you. Uh, of the of the of Mark of the Beast, and I was umming and ahhing whether to do it before the vignettes or after, and I thought, oh, I'll do it after, and then I re I literally just realised that L is now heading off. So you know what? I'll read it out now, weirdly after one vignette, so that L gets to hear it. So Fantastic. There we go. So just a little epilogue for you guys. Night falls over the village. Davakar's silhouette merges with the dark of the skies. The man sheds a long black coat and picks up the skull of the king as Baumelo's features drift off him like a fine mist. He touches the tips of the copper crown with a finger, then pulls the hand back swiftly as one of them pierces his skin, still sharp after centuries in the grave. Touching his gashed fingertip to his lips softly, he stares into the empty eye sockets. Two faint lights dance inside like distant stars. The lights mesmerize, enthrall, inspire. A grinding voice whispers, the false witch hunter stands paralyzed, listening. Then he twitches and falls to his knees, the skull held high before him. He coughs hard and catches his breath before speaking out loud in the cold air with a trembling voice. Thy will be done, my king. There we okay. go. There we go. Not ominous. Bad. Not Captain at all. Matters. Um, yeah, spoiler, Dirac didn't find Pamelo. Or Odaka, or whatever we're calling him now. Um, cool. So there we go. That's Mark of the Beast. Definitely, definitely ended now. Uh, we've got three more vignettes to you. So hold on there in chat. Don't go anywhere. Uh, but we'll <laughs> wave goodbye to L for the evening. Adios. Farewell, farewell. Um, and uh, yeah, and we'll see you next. I week. shall see you next week. Bye bye. Um, cool. So next up, we have a uh, vignette for Anton. Um, I don't think the others will be involved in this, but do correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, but I think it's more of a, a personalized thing. Um, so, Anton, you are, um, and I'm happy for it to be the very next morning, you are um, kind of rousing yourself at the Witch and Familiar. And uh, you head downstairs, and there, waiting for you uh, by the bar, uh, not that you knew he was coming, is your friend and mine. It's Keller, um, the opportunistic and somewhat um, perhaps distrustworthy individual you traveled here with who uh, came to the Sun Temple and immediately kind of co-opted um, the position both of you were maybe meant to share there. And yeah, John, go, go ahead and and swing Chris and Sam out of the out of the scene. Um, yeah. So, what do I owe this pleasure? Uh, he turns round and says, "Ah," and slides a drink, um, like a half pint, 
uh, across the the bar to you and says, I hear you've been uh, busy. Very busy. The trip to Glimmervan uh, turned out to be of great importance after all. Mm, I hear the uh, town guard have been talking to some insiders at the church about this Baumelo fellow and his unfortunate fate there. Yes. Um, a very, a very ugly and messy affair. Um, yeah. And what about yourself, Keller? What have you been up to in these last well, few days? The last two days, Anton, I have been talking to some of the uh, the, the high theurgers at the church about, you know, something for you to do. Because we feel that obviously uh, with this furore about Baumelo, clearly you didn't get the chance to exercise your talents fully and, and negotiate the uh, the work between, between him and uh, us uh, sons and daughters of Prios. Um, but ha- perhaps you'd have a bit more luck with another. Go ahead. Tell me, what do you know about Father Savola? Ah, the uh, the rebel priest with... That's the one. Strange ideas and interpretations of Prios' teachings. Yes. I'm yes. familiar-ish. Now, I get the sense that here in Thistlehold, he, even within the church, he has his uh, admirers. Although... It is truly beyond me why uh, the authorities at Indoros haven't stepped in and quashed his little mission here quite yet. And not that we're asking you to do that. If you were to receive those orders, I'm sure it would come from someone much higher up than myself. But um, here's the thing. There have been individuals causing trouble at his his little speeches, his his rallies, his sermons. And, uh, well, the word on the street is apparently that we are paying them to do so. That is not the case. And we would like you, Anton, to find out who is. Whether he has fallen outside the grace of Prios or not, he is still a priest, and we would not want it said that the church is dealings with him were underhanded. Okay. Okay. I can do this. Do you know when his next sermon is? <laughs> That's easy. Noon today. Every okay. day. Well, I will uh, observe and learn and try to find out a little bit more about these troublemakers. Yes, that would seem to be a good idea. He uh, kind of downs the rest of his drink uh, and looks around and says, "Ah, maybe you're uh, better off out here, Anton. It certainly looks a bit more lush than uh, the quarters in the temple. Well, you can always uh, make make more visits down here and I can (laughs) keep keep your good company some more. He smiles and says, if only I could find the time, but they're keeping me very busy. Very busy. And uh, he turns and wanders out. Okay. Well, I will um, get my stuff ready uh, to, to go and um, yeah, attend this this sermon. Get my... my um... Actually, I think I might not want to look too conspicuously like a priest for this maybe sure. I'll, yeah maybe try and disguise myself somewhat um sure yeah because i don't, I don't, I don't me... think i have any robes that are like i, I think my, my my clothing is perhaps not too no like, it's obviously priestly like i don't i mean it, it, it is quite a priestly outfit but you're also not high enough rank that it's like very obvious that you're a 
um, a father of Prius. So yeah, um, yeah. I mean, if you if you did want I guess, to, I guess, I guess maybe like I could see if Askarai has anything that I could like a cloak or something that I could borrow like to wear over the. I think I think that would, I, I imagine Askarai has a selection of voluminous <laughs> shrouding cloaks. Um, so I think that's that's kind of a reasonable uh, a reasonable thing. Um, I mean, Keller's got a bunch of cloaks um, that you could. I'm sure you could. Uh, probably won't let you borrow them. Um, but yeah, shall we? Shall we say that? Um, well, you know what? Let's at this point. You know what? Bring Sam in, um, and you know, feel for it's up to you whether you think Anton would ha ask him along for help or, or anything like that. Um, but it's always more fun to have another player in, isn't it? So why do oh, Sam isn't there? Um, so that's that's ruined my my best laid plans. Um, that's fine. But let's say Anton, that Anton is very much that. a lone wolf. <laughs> yeah, as the last two sessions have proved so. Lone uh, wolf yeah. yeah, that's fine. Uh, well, I will I will make my way to uh, the the square where Father Savolo is is delivering his sermon, sure. and uh, I think I'll just hang back and just sort of observe what's going on, just paying close attention to the crowd and seeing seeing who's watching more intently maybe as uh, a follower of his and see who's watching with just the curiosity of a bystander yeah cool that seems to make sense uh, as i desperately try and click through this pdf every time i really need some information on this pdf and i go and click on it it doesn't respond for about 10 seconds <laughs> um but there we go but i believe uh if i can find the mission house yeah the the actual mission house of uh savola is uh, very close to the Antique Plaza, kind of between the Antique Plaza, uh, which is sort of in the center of Thistlehold, slightly to the south of it, and the, the guard barracks. So that, if you want to kind of mentally place itself, that's where. And yeah, most of his sermons take place within the Mission House itself, which seems to be a kind of large, airy structure. Um, and um, it, it's fine. If, if Sam's here now, he can, he can be thrown in now. Um, that's all good. Did you think you would have invited him along? Yeah, I think I would have. Yeah, that's fine then. Okay. Um, so fling Sam in. And uh, yeah, what's happened essentially, Sam, is that uh, Keller has come along and given Anton the uh, task of going and trying to investigate who is uh, causing a ruckus at the sermons that the renegade priest Father Salvola gives. Um, he's, a, he's a very well, you will have heard of him. He's very well known in Thistlehold and is yeah. known for preaching unchurchly things like tolerance and kindness <laughs> to everyone and um, t t disgusting ideas like that. Um, I, I'm, I'm slightly over exaggerating. I don't want to cast the Church of Prius as a kind of horrible, redeem, like irredeemable 40K style religion or something, but um, certainly it's a bit more severe officially than what Sarvola is preaching. Um, so yeah, you have, in your absence, lent Anton one of your cloaks um, for him to hide under. Um, and now you're heading down to uh, the mission house near Antiquities Plaza. Okay. Um, as you approach the place where he gives a sermon every day at noon, um, you hear that he's already started. The, the building itself, the mission house, seems to be packed with people. Um, uh, people of all... A great many of them look poor, um, but not all of them by any stretch of the imagination. Um, and you can basically kind of just tuck yourselves in at the back and kind of see uh, where he is giving the sermon. He is stood on a table. There's no kind of fancy stage or anything like that. Uh, and he looks... Um, he's a man, he's definitely a humble looking individual. He's wearing a plain brown sackcloth robe and... Um, his head, either he has lost his hair at some point or it has been shaved. And he's a man of kind of late middle age with a with a kind of careworn face. Uh, a careworn but slightly severe looking face. And I think we have an image of him if we want to uh if we want to bring it up. Yes, there we go. Um he his style of talking, he he talks quite quietly. Um sort of quietly but and calmly but also powerfully um to the point where the the mission house is like hushed so that everyone can can just about hear the words he's saying i won't go through them but it's certainly um a sermon of no surprise given his reputation he he talks about how um the ways of Prius are the ways of, of love and giving and forgiveness. And uh, he wants to make sure the light shines on everyone from the lowest to the highest and that um, everyone can receive 
the um, the warmth of of Prios's love, and uh, including those who have to this point lost their way, the barbarians, the changelings, the the goblins, the ogres, the e e everyone needs to be included and, and held in in Prios arms, and um, yeah, there's nothing particularly inflammatory about it. There's nothing overtly kind of... Uh, it, I mean, technically, it is heretical, but not not grotesquely so. Um, and in fact, how, how old is Anton, Mike? Uh, I think we said, like, 40s. Right. I think you can, you can make a roll. Do you want to give me a cunning roll, then, uh, at difficulty? I'm going to give you a, a minus four for it, though. It's a difficult one, but just, just to see. Uh, no, I, I roll the twenty. <laughs> oh, oh uh, yeah, you okay? It's safe to say then you've you've never ever heard these kind of turns of phrase and the way he talks about um, Prios and the church. It, it, you've never heard the like of it. It's it's very unusual. Um, it's entirely up to you whether you consider these ideas dangerous or appealing or um, a mixture of the two um, or, or just wrong. But um, they, they certainly don't seem overly inflammatory. You know, he's not, there's no rhetoric to it. He's not inciting anything. He's just saying, th this is what I believe. Perhaps, perhaps if you believe this too, follow me and we can change the world for the better. Um, I think I'll make some grumbling noises and mutter things about him being a misguided fool <laughs> who can't read the text properly and things sure. like that under my breath to ask sure. I, I'll just whisper back sounds the same as all the other priests to me the, the man's clueless <laughs> <laughs> um, as he reaches the kind of crescendo of his, his sermon which um, he doesn't particularly raise his voice for he just delivers it in a calm um, reasonable manner um, a, a voice from the crowd near you cries out if you'd been in charge during the war we would have lost to the Dark Lords. Prios is, is a god of a god of revenge, of justice. There's kind of a scattering of, of quietish agreements through the crowd, uh, but those around him kind of turn on him and sort of kind of jeer at him or or, or, or shout at the man who shouted. You you see a kind of brief scuffle that quickly dies down. Okay. Sarvola kind of pauses to let the man speak and then just resumes his sermon. He doesn't address it. He doesn't. He just resumes. I'm going to whisper to, to Askeroy, let's get closer, identify that, that man, uh, that person, listen closer and follow them if, if we must. All right. Sounds good. Uh, the sermon goes on for another 10 minutes or so. Um, Savola thanks everyone for coming and uh, kind of blesses everyone and then clim clambers down from his table, briefly sp talks to um, kind of a, a small uh, a small boy, maybe nine or ten-ish, um, who kind of smiles and, and goes off to, to kind of prepare something in another room. And Savola starts. A lot of people are kind of shuffling out slowly. Uh, but Savola is kind of walking around and talking to individuals who are who are hanging on. Um, are, are you going to do so, or are you going to just try and end, identify the heckler and then? Yeah, I think probably go to the heckler. Um, okay. Yeah. Um, well, why don't you both? Uh, I mean, I'm assuming Askarai is helping you in this. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, um, why don't you both give me a vigilant role? Um, and I think that. Um, I think you'll take a minus to it because it's quite a large crowd and everyone's shuffling out at the same time. So why don't you give me a vigilant roll at minus three, the both of you? Okay. I don't make it. I also don't make it. <laughs> okay, that's fine. Um, so you, uh, yeah, you don't you don't manage to find the man in the crowd as you kind of on your way out and people are kind of milling outside some of them drifting off some of them staying and talking to each other and some people kind of talking to Savola or each other inside as well um 
are you are you going to take any more steps to try and ident- try and find the man who who shouted that out asking after him or I'll say to uh, Anton, we could ask the priest. Maybe he knows who it is. Yeah. Yeah, I think we could. And if we're smart, we could um, uh, we could um, give the impression that we're that we're on his side. Um, so, yeah, we'll do that. Okay. I think I'm trying to approach Father Savola. Sure. Um as you, you wander back inside, quite a few people have left now. He, he's still kind of talking to a couple of people. And as you watch, he uh, as you kind of walk over to him, he gives uh, a, a blessing of Prios to to uh, kind of an older woman who kind of thanks him and uh, and kind of bows to him a little and returns the sign and then wanders off. He turns around and says, oh, I don't believe I've seen you here at my sermons before. Could you... Askarai doesn't need to. Anton, can you roll discreet, please? Um, but at a plus three for yeah. the voluminous cloak. <laughs> cloak of, of of hiding, plus three. Don't make it. Okay. <laughs> he he kind of uh looks kind of looks at you for a, a briefest of a second longer than Askarai, and then turns back and says, Can can I help you, gentlemen, with something? Father, I, I think I think at this point, actually, before I start, I like just want to make it clear that I, I'm going to have to try and lie through my teeth here. So, mm-hmm. like, I'm not sure if I need to roll anything for that. Or... <laughs> well, tell me what you're saying, and then we'll then we'll okay. see whether it's needed. Well, I, I I think I I want to say to to him, Father, the the, uh, the, the as, as a new arrival in Thistle Holds, that sermon spoke deeply to me, and I very much appreciate those words of hope and inspiration and that that good word of prios that needs to be spread around this town um and just try and butter him up in that in that way Mm -hmm. um could you give me a persuasive role please at a minus two (laughs) Mm. well the rolling has not gone well tonight not, sh- not surely. Hey, not for I, him. I, I roll a one. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. He kind of he blinks a bit and peers at you a bit closer, and then says, I, "I'm sorry, my child. I, I, I fear I mistook you for someone else." So, yes, <laughs> you are, you say you are new in Thistlehold. Indeed, father. Indeed, um, and you life uh, up here, but uh, I. I don't come from much, and your words offer me great hope and, yeah, comfort in my heart. Um, but I was disturbed to hear of so many um, disapproving voices, or a, a disapproving voice in the in the crowd today. Uh, it, it saddened me greatly to hear that. He nods and says, "Yes, sadly, some some do not want uh, these." these notions, these ideas to uh, be said out loud. And sadly, uh, every now and then we we hear from them here, but I feel that the best thing to do is to let them have their say and then um, move on. And uh, your, your teachings seem uh, so truly uh, holy and, and worthy. So who, who could it be that feels so so strongly against the good word that you spread. Uh, can you give me a persuasive role, please, at plus two? I do not make that one. <laughs> he says, oh, my, my child, don't don't worry yourself about that. Um, it, it's, it's best not to uh, uh, pay any attention to these things or, or worry about them unduly. We are perfectly safe here, and uh, well, all all that has been done is is harsh words. Yes, uh, I find it better, as I say, to uh, let them have their say and then move on. If you will excuse me, uh, there are others here waiting for my blessing. But uh, Prios holds you safe, both of you, in in his uh, warm, loving arms, and he. 
uh, je- makes the gesture of Prius towards you both and then wanders over to someone else. We were close. Uh, it might have been easier just to truck the uh, the heckler and take him roughly in a dark alley with a dagger and extract some information that way. <laughs> <laughs> Priest. <laughs> well, well you, I, I'm devoted to my faith. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> so funny. devoted that you'll you'll threaten someone with a dagger who clearly feels exactly the same way you do about your. <laughs> well, <laughs> I didn't say I was going to do that. I just said it would be easier to do that. <laughs> yeah, sure, that's, that's fair. Uh, Your Honor, I think you'll find. I said <laughs> that would be easier. Not that that was my intention. <laughs> but this man was found with multiple so, dagger wounds in a dark alleyway. He's I, neither here nor there. I've been, I've been spending a lot of time with bloodthirsty barbarian warrior women. It's worked <laughs> up for me a little bit, all right? Yeah, that's fair. Um, is there any other uh, element of this uh, this plan that you want to concoct and carry out? Or I'm actually fine to kind of leave that there with you two kind of wandering back to the inn, sort of. You know, you, you've seen, you know more about the situation, but there's still more to, certainly more to be uncovered there. Yeah, I think as a, as a first attempt, that's not too bad. And, you know, there's always sure. tomorrow. Like Heller said that he would be there every day. Every so. day. I will I will leave it there for now, draw a line under it. Okay. And at the very That's least, why, you yeah. managed to convince him that you weren't a priest. So that was <laughs> that was a start. Um okay, I, I think I we have to go back and help if he if he needs since he Excellent. failed today. Well you you two can be uh, be together in this subplot <laughs> then. That's good. Um so next we have um Chris's uh Chris's vignette, Steo's vignette. Um, now, this one involves a trip outside of Thistlehold, um, and I believe that Asker, I already said he would want to be involved uh, with this happen, um, and um, unless anyone has any injections, Anton can certainly partake as well if, if you feel he would, and that mission, uh, correct me if I'm, if I'm wrong, Chris, is to head back to Jackad's Heart, check in there, and see if they know where you can find the Goblin Shuglard. Uh, who um, you feel needs needs a portion of the pay you received for saving Jackad's heart, and also to find out if he and his tribe are in any way in a better or worse situation. Yeah, I'll be um, taking most of my wealth. How much is my wealth? How much did we get paid? Out well, of that's the, uh... that's a very good point, isn't it? Um, off the top of my head, I can't quite figure out how many days the hunt for the flayer took. I want to say four. Does that sound about right? Yeah. About four days? Okay, well, the standard pay from the guards, as you know, is a shilling per day for this kind of stuff. And Night Pitch said he'd match it. So I believe each of you will receive eight shillings. That's not terrible. It's not terrible. <laughs> not until you look at the, the price of the army you want, Chris, and then it's pretty terrible. But, um... I was going to say, but thanks for reopening that. Wound. That wound. <laughs> um, so, um, Anton, does that seem like the kind of thing that's um, you, you, that a priest would be up for? Or uh... I actually, actually don't know. I think if if Keller's given me a job, then I would probably stick around, be to, pursuing that instead to, to do that a little bit. That's fine. That's fine. Conscious well, that I haven't really done many priestly things yet, so I probably should focus on that. Focus on your on your non-existent flock. <laughs> well, these are your flock, right? Yeah. Um, so uh, oh, that, that's fine. Let's let's kick Mike to the curb for for the time being then, um, and uh, yeah, let's gloss over like the trip over there. I don't I don't feel any need to particularly role play that, um, but let's have the two of you then um, uh, walking in through the uh, through the gateway of Jackard's heart. The place is much as it was last time, only it seems a, a great deal more attended. Uh, there is a wonderful smell of cooking coming out from the inn. Um, the ogre Mangold is is working on his garden, which looks still healthy, but a great deal less so than it did the last time you were here. Um, and as you you walk to the inn, you are greeted warmly um, by the uh, by the occupants, uh, and you know it's not quite a hero's welcome because they don't really have uh, the resources for that kind of thing. But um, 
Certainly, you are very warmly welcomed by the people I've been stalling now for about 30 seconds while I can find their names. Cauldra and Tandrag. <laughs> and, their, and their children. But mainly Cauldra and Tandrag. Um, yeah. Um, I, I'm going to try and get a table for myself and ask Rai, and I, I'm going to be well up for some of this delicious smelling cooking. Um, so I'll get a nice bowl. You'll get some on the house. Agreed. Sweet. Um, yeah, so Caldra kind of serves it up for you and says, ah, so what brings you back to the heart? Yeah. Um, I am on a mission to see what came of Shugloods, the goblin who uh, helped us that fateful night. Did he ever turn up here again? No, although there were lights in the, the woodland to the south for a couple of nights afterwards. If I was a betting woman, I'd say that was him and his tribe. Oh, okay. Well, maybe but we'll that go was, for a... That was a couple of weeks ago now. I don't know if they're still there. Luckily, I brought a tracker, didn't I, Askarai? I guess you did. Well, uh, <laughs> a couple of weeks is quite a long time, but if it's a whole whole tribe of goblins they should have left a quite a large track with them yeah and we're far enough away from the forest to warrant any um uh, to warrant any searches by daylight being risky anyway so we'll we'll eat up and, and have a drink or two and, and head out on a mid-afternoon walk that seems perfectly reasonable um you have uh, your meal at uh, jackard's heart which is delightful yes um and um, then strike out kind of o over the field, which still has odd, the odd blackened marks around where the uh, the cauldron was. Uh, and you see there's kind of woodland spread out below you. It was woodland you kind of, you didn't go through, but you certainly went near when you, when you tracked the two barbarian brothers in what seems like a lifetime ago now. Um, and you, you find yourself within uh, a, a loose patch of woodland, certainly nothing like Davakar, um, Having having a meander just south of Jackad's heart, um, Askarai. Um, do you want to give me? A, well, both of you can make a vigilant roll if you want. But if you're relying on Askarai to take a look around first, then um, he can just give a vigilant roll. Okay. I made it. I got a three. There we go. Um, yeah, you find the remains of a rather pathetic camping area. Um, a little bit of a way into the woodland. People were obviously here for some length of time but, and have been gone for some length of time as well. Um, they were kind of trying to cook things here. There was a campfire. There was it seemed to be little cover, although you find some areas where kind of rough bedding seems to have been made from, um, you know, nearby heather and, and uh, branches, um, but nothing, nothing too impressive, really. It, was, it must have been quite rough sleeping. Um, is but there they, they sign, are not here anymore. Is there any sign, kind of, which way they left? Or... Um, yeah, yeah. Why make you make another roll? Um, yeah, there are tracks of several individuals leading off to the east, to the northeast. Okay. Um, I'll kind of mention this to Steer and point out, like, it looks like they left through here, heading northeast. I'm not sure what that going towards but it seems to they weren't it doesn't seem to be if they hadn't they were heading too far south to be heading to thistlehold can both of you give me a cunning roll do i get any kind of bonus because i have the world map open on, on another screen here or? <laughs> well does steo have the world map open on the screen? no steo does not I, I made it just okay. The if they were heading in this direction and they didn't change from it, the next settlement they're going to hit is Blackmore. Okay. Blackmore, because we haven't really talked about it, is a, a shanty town to the southeast of Thistlehold that is mainly comprised of um, refugees making their way further north. Um, the various goblin tribes and ogres who helped in the construction of Thistle Hole to live there in frank, frankly squalor, um, and other 
unsavory individuals who um, have decided that Thistlehold isn't quite dangerous enough for them. <laughs> um, it is not a pleasant place, um, but it is a place that sadly um, exists so that Thistlehold might exist in a slightly better state. Many of the goblins who live there work in Thistlehold every day as servants, couriers, um, you know, cooks, um, various lowly tasks. Um, they could be heading to Blackmore, I guess that's the most likely place. Oh, goodness. Do you reckon, would we be able to make that before nightfall? I don't want to go to Blackmore when it's night. Pro you probably, it will probably hit darkness as you got there. Let's go and uh, give Jack God's heart the run of business for the evening. We can set off in the morning and, and uh, I do not want to go into Blackmore when it's dark. Jeez, Thistlehold's yeah. bad enough. And that's where all the stuff we don't want in Thistlehold goes. That's to make it a lot more difficult to find anyone. Yeah, there's that. Come on, I could honestly I could I could go for another bowl of whatever that stuff they were serving was. Exactly. Some kind of lamb stew. Delightful stuff. Uh, absolutely. So you um, you spend the evening at, at, at Jack Hart's heart and um, Black Hawk you... Three. I hope. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, Black Hawk Three, the re Black Hawkening. Um, <laughs> no, you uh, and then head to Thistlehold in the morning. Um, over the next couple of days, I, I don't feel the need to stick to a particular timeline. Over the next couple of days, is it safe to say you, you find yourself heading to Blackmore to ask around? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, sure. Um, it takes you uh, a couple of hours to reach there. Um, it's exactly as you remember it. You have all been there. It is uh, a squalid, um, sprawling uh, shanty town of tents, uh, burrows in the earth, uh, some a few roughly erected buildings that's teeming um, with, uh, you know, the the unfortunate and uh, the unfortunately amoral. Um, it's loud, it's packed, and as you wander in, people uh, eye you both with wariness and with a certain amount of, are they a decent mark? Yeah. So um, before we get to the town proper, I'll kind of mention to Askrai. If I don't know if Askrai has a residence ring for Thistleholds, but... Uh, I, think, I think I've... Just for ease's sake, I've said that you all do, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so I'll definitely be taking mine off and say, you want to take that off? You want to put it somewhere where it's not going to get stolen? All right, good idea. I'll uh, take it off and hide it somewhere in the in the robe. Sure. <clears throat> um, so as you, as you head in, kind of uh, people, you know, part out of your way a little bit, you're strangers. Um, and uh, you find yourself in the middle of kind of a long row of tents, some of which are selling things, uh, some of which are selling individuals. Um, what, how are you going to go about this? I'm, I'm going to um, see if I can catch a, a tent staffed or apparently or owned by goblins. There are plenty of them around. Right near you is a... Um, uh, a goblin who is shouting at everyone who goes past uh, in an attempt to sell them some rather mm, certainly underfed looking uh, birds, um, a couple of which literally have the arrowhead still in them, yeah, um, the, a, a roasting on a low spit. He kind of catches your eye and says, bird, good bird. Thank God, pass. We had a good breakfast this morning. I'm looking to buy information. What you want? Goblin by the name of Shuglud. Name, name, tribe. Oh. You can you make a cunning roll if you want. Yeah, please. Oh, he did mention it and I didn't write it down. Cunning is not my good stat. Oh, he does it! Four! Nice. Uh, Shuglud's tribe was called the Varaguldru. Yes. Varag Goldru. He or, or what kind of, of them? He looks a little taken aback for a moment and then cackles and says, <laughs> "Yes, yes, yeah." I'll give him. Um, I'll give him a small coin. Uh, let me see. What? What's small? Thal not Thaler. Thaler's big. 
an ore tag. <laughs> yeah, I'll give him an ore tag. He kind of peers at it and goes, one more. Oh. I give him the other one. <laughs> he okay. takes them both and kind of bites down on them, uh, throws them behind him in the, in the tent and goes, Varaguldru, most dead. Rest. Yeah, near the big tent. Thanks. I'll there is away. indeed uh, kind of some large central tents uh, that you can navigate your way through to. Um, okay. This uh, is looking, uh, I'll t turn to ask right on the way over there. It's like, this is looking slightly more positive than I thought it was going to. I'm going to be honest with you. When I saw yeah. those ruins, I thought we'd be looking for a corpse. Uh, if there aren't many of them left, but we've found the tribe, then one of them should know Shuglet. At least yeah. what's happened to them. And if they don't, at least there's someone we can pay reparations to. True. So, uh, you find yourselves near this big tent. There, there are a lot of individuals swarming around here. Um, can you... Both give me. I want you to make two. Both make two vigilant rolls for me, please. Uh, one is normal, and the second is at a minus two. I feel both. Okay. I made both. Just okay. Um, Steo, you don't manage to kind of see anyone around. Uh, you know, there are a lot of goblins here, um, and. Uh, Askarai, you uh, basically, um, while you're roaming around, you kind of peer down a little, I mean, it's not an alleyway because they're all tents, but like down where a little patch of, of open ground is where literally the worst possible tents you can imagine are pitched. They're just kind of low, you know, it's just like a sheet over, over um, two sets of crossing sticks. Um, and around that... Um, a group of four goblins is sitting. Um, they have um, what you actually recognize are their axes. Um, that they are, you know, the blades that the Varaguldra were using at Jackad's heart. Um, battered, rusty, evil-looking weapons uh, that they have. They have managed to acquire a whetstone, and one by one, they're all kind of. Passing them, uh, passing it round and sharpening them up. Uh, as you get a bit closer, you recognize one of them as Shuglad. I'll kind of uh, tap Steer on the shoulder and point them out to him. I think, I think that's him. Okay. They all have, um, like, uh, when, when they attack Jackav's heart, they were all wearing kind of like black face paint. Um, odd marks on handprints over their faces. This has been uh, wiped off, and now they have literally the opposite. They have uh, white face-painted marks with which a lot, all four of them have kind of marked almost their entire face with. Um, and they almost look like kind of... You don't think they intentionally look that way, but they almost look like skulls um, on, top of their, uh, on top of their normal sort of dark green brownish skin. Um. Yeah, the the two of you can walk up to them. Yeah, I will. I'm not making. Um, I don't want to. I'm not going to be shouting Shuglod, me old friend. But we will definitely be trying to make myself visible to him. Okay, as you approach, Shuglod kind of looks up, mutters something to the others, and they all kind of stand up and stand behind him. Uh, Shuglod looks up at you and says, "Right, what do you want?" I want to pay reparations. You didn't get any cut from the help you gave us, and we didn't pay any wergeld for the uh, for the ones of your clan who we had to kill. He he's just staring at you silently. It's that simple. I'll um, take out a purse or take out my I take out one of one of my purses because I keep stuff separate for pickpocketing and in that purse is uh, two thaler and eight shillings okay and you're are you passing the purse to him <laughs> he takes it holds it for a second and then flings it back into the the mud at your feet and says get us into thistle hold 
the agency. I'll pick Tell up them the we don't even need pay. We wish to die as warriors. Pick up the person. There will be a very knowing glance to him. Kind of like... Our tribe... Our tribe is dead. We're just the last of them to die. How you many find us... Left? Find us work. Bloody work. Dangerous work. That can be your reparation. I'll get it done. He he nods and all four of them turn around and carry on. <laughs> Pat ass cry on this shoulder and kind of take him away. Okay. That seems like a good point uh, at which to end that vignette. Uh, and we have one left, which is Askarai's vignette, after he's guest starred in two others. <laughs> uh, and for this vignette, I think it's safe to say there's definitely not going to be any Chris or Mike. Yeah, I don't think so. So, if we can just have me and Sam, please. Thank you. <laughs> so, Askarai, uh, I think it's fair to say you'll do this at night? Yes. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, so, how are you planning to enter the barracks and scene? Uh, I was thinking for one to do it on a night where I've successfully changelinged into a guard like figure. that seems reasonable. I don't think you need a role for that, do you? You just have I a mean, discreet role to make if someone I sort of there, is, you. there is a role to change, but I feel like I would have okay. just like if I failed to do it one night, yeah, you, then you wouldn't have the you wouldn't make be making the um the attempt, yeah, right? Exactly. Yeah, yeah. That that seems perfectly reasonable. Let's say it's a couple of nights after um, the encounter in Blackmore. Um, you have uh, you you've considered that you've successfully um, shape shifted into the, the you know a, a reasonable facsimile of a guard. Um, you've acquired um, maybe somehow uh, surreptitiously borrowed off Steo um, some kind of heavier armor uh, with which to uh, make your attempts, and you walk to the gates of the barracks. Um, do you want to make a discreet roll for me at a plus four, please? Okay. So I think they probably don't blink twice if you kind of look like a guard. I made it. I rolled an eight. Um, yeah, you, you head up to the gates of the barracks. Uh, or really, it's like an opening into the large courtyard that is the barracks. And just walk straight through acting like you belong there, and uh, no one blinks. No one looks twice, and now you are in that courtyard. Um, I assume, are, are you going to do any casing? Are you going to um, kind of go anywhere else first? Or are you beelining for the corpse examiners? I think I'll move... I'm going to move slowly. I'm, a sh I'm anticipating that there won't be basically anyone like up and awake Certainly, in the corpse examiners, mm -hmm. um, so. and he does. He did. He did work at night, but I, I'm going to assume you've specifically chosen, like you know, it's five o'clock in the morning. Yeah. Like dawn exactly. is coming. Um, presumably, they'll be off their shift. The I I would have basically chosen the hour of night where I think they're least likely to be there. I think that's fair. I think that's um, fair. So you're just basically beelining straight for where you want to be. Yeah, I don't think I want anything else here, and I don't want to run the risk of bumping into someone. So I'm just gonna head uh, head there as directly as I can, but not like I'm not gonna run over there. I'm just sure, gonna yeah, walk yeah. as if I have reasonable. a thing to do in the corpse examiners. That seems reasonable, almost as if you have a thing to do in the corpse <laughs> examiners. Exactly. Um, you head into the building. Um, I believe I, I said the first time you visited, it was kind of a mess hall and then a set of stone stairs downwards and the, the corpse examiner was below there. Uh, you walk into the building, you know, there are people roaming around the mess hall, eating, laughing, uh, and silently uh, walk down to the, the corpse examiner's office. Um, can you give me uh, a discrete roll at plus five, please? That's the maximum I can give you. Okay. Um, I made it. I got a okay. 12. Yeah. No one no one notices you walking down the stone steps. Um, you get to the corpse examiner's door. It is uh, locked in a very rudimentary way. Um, it, you know, it's latched. 
and the door is fairly loose on its hinges. You think you can get through this quite easily. It's just a matter of easily and quickly and silently. Yeah. Um, can you give me... It's up to you either... You know what? A quick, a cunning, or a discreet roll. Let's see how you handle this. For me, I'm best at discreet, and also discreet seems like what I probably yeah. want to go for. Sure. Um, so I'll try against discreet. I made it. I got a six. There we go. Softly, so <laughs> softly, quietly, you uh, kind of get out uh, a small length of... Um, metal wire, like thick metal wire. Slide it, unlatch the door, slip in, and you're there. Um, the corpse examiner seems exactly, the, the room seems exactly how it was the last time you were there. There are stone slabs, there are um, kind of um, wooden and stone uh, little little doors along one of the walls where you know bodies and their effects are kept. Um, on one of the, the um, slabs, is uh, the the body of kind of a middle aged woman with uh, what appear to be some knife wounds on her torso, just a just another victim of of an evening in Thistlehold. Um, but you have a specific target, don't you, Askerai? Um, things seem to be catalogued along these these kind of uh, little doorways and, and cupboards quite well. Um, you suspect the work of the corpse examiner's assistant rather than the corpse examiner himself uh, because the writing looks precise and trim and not drunk. Um, the guy. And before long, um, you find yourself uh, opening up uh, the, uh, you know, in, in a modern sense, it would be the file, right? Um, or the, like a little uh, fancy container. But in, in Thistlehold, is merely like a, a little cubby hole. Uh, with a little wooden door that you open up uh, that's marked as the uh, effects of... Uh, and let me get this right, because you will, of course, have worked out exactly where to, to look because you figured out exactly what the pattern was. Um, it is the, listed as the effects of Teoman, a chimney sweep. But you know better. <laughs> um it's actually the effects of uh, the previous victim of the Flayer, uh, an elf of unknown identity. You reach into the cubby hole, rummage around a little bit, bring out kind of um, you know some some horribly blood stained, although now dry and stiff, clothing. Um, you bring out a feather, which you look at curiously, and probably I imagine pocket that as well, probably, just in yeah. case. Yeah. And then you find your quarry. You reach in, pull it out, hold it up to the faint light that's coming through from the slanted windows, and examine your prize. A small iron ring. There we go. End of the vignette. Let's have everyone back in, please. Yay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, so that was fun. That was interesting. So um, spooky. <laughs> had to do some uh, some thinking about how Asker I could get his hand on one of the iron packed things because Baumelo nicked them, and then Fake Baumelo nicked the rest of them. So yeah, uh, but, but realized of course that the elf that was killed would have also had an iron packed ring. Mm. So there we go. When Asker I suggested, I, you, I kind of let had it. It had to be vague because I, at that point, I didn't know what was going to happen to our Mello. Maybe he would get caught. Or, yeah, yeah. But um, yeah, it made sense that the the elf would have one. There we go. Um, so yeah, that's the end of our session for the evening. Obviously, it was a bit um, um, slightly different from how we usually have because the, the story arc came to an end there, um, and then we had the vignettes. But hopefully, people enjoyed that, and hopefully, the players enjoyed that. Um, so yeah. thank you for watching everyone uh, as per usual if you've got any comments or questions or anything like that pop them in the chat and uh, John will flash them up for us to answer um, and in the meantime again a little bit of self promotion uh, we've got social media links YouTube VOD links all in the video description below we've got a Patreon 
uh, feel free to go there and check it out and even sign up for it if that's what you feel like you want. Um, we also have another ongoing series currently on Twitch. We play Vampire the Masquerade 5th Edition on uh, Monday evenings at the moment. We start that at 8 o'clock GMT, uh, which is the same as we start this. Um, different set of players, but I'm still running it, and isn't that the important thing? Um <laughs> But even more of an important thing is that John, our stream manager on this, is a playing a character in that. Now, now that's a draw. Um, okay, so uh, without any further ado, well, first of all, feel free to flash stuff up, John, but if there's anything. But um, how do, was that good for you guys? Was that uh, the end of that storyline satisfying? Yeah, yeah, definitely. I hope we get a chance to track down Balmelo as some. Oh, I can't see that yeah. happening. Just <laughs> why would? <laughs> Why would there be any kind of narrative satisfaction in a in a in a published story that I've um, played around with and augmented? Um, <laughs> the arrogance. Uh, oh yeah, might be worth mentioning the Simbaroon bundle of holding. That is a very good point. Uh, if anyone fancies uh, picking up some um, very reasonably priced Simbaroon PDFs. Um, the uh, the creators of Simbaroom Free League are currently working with uh, Bundle of Holding, uh, which is a, a great charity site that does bundles of uh, RPG-related stuff. And if you head over there, um, if someone want to drop the link in chat. Um, but yeah, if you head over there, they've got two bundles, one which is like a core bundle that has the core rule book and like player's guide, I think, and GM's guide, uh, monster codex, things like that. And that's a bundle there that I think is retailing for about £15, which is really good, really good value. Uh, and the other one is a setting one that has, I think, all the camp the big setting and campaign pain books like Thistlehold and Indoros and Carvosti and stuff. And I think that's also about £15. Uh, don't quote me exactly on the price, but I had a look at it last night, and I think that's what it was. Very good... Um, very good value and for a good cause. And just uh, as I said last night on the Twitter, we are not being paid to say this. Um, <laughs> we just would like to point it out for you. I think that it's going to a health worker charity, Direct Relief, which is um, right now in 2020, Topical. it's a good charity to pick, right? Yeah. So um, yeah, check that out if you're interested. Um, but yeah, Mark of the Beast, closing up that. How? Um, yeah, was that satisfying for you guys? The second part of the Copper Crown trilogy? Yeah, well, I, I I hate murder mysteries, and uh, but that was that was very fun. <laughs> Good. Good. Yeah, I I really like that it had a bit of everything. Like there was some, there was one like set of sessions where we were just like fighting all night, and then yeah. there was a a few sessions where we didn't do basically any fighting. We were just kind of uh, going around town talking to people, trying to track down this the the flare. Yeah. I really like. It, it felt like a nice variation and, and like a swing around. And yeah. then uh, I, I liked the way, like the way it ended up being paced where like um, everything did feel like it all funneled together into this one big climactic confrontation, which was, uh, which was nice. And yeah, I got to do some nice little horror descriptions, which as you know, I do like. <laughs> yeah. I think it was like, it kind of really, really focused as well. Like starting like the, the next story arc, there's like a, like, I think everyone's really clear about things. Um, yeah, and, and like, and it's like the the, fo the the story has like got a real um, it's sort formed. of singular singular goal to it. Yeah, almost. yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah, the crown is bad news. Odarko is real bad news, <laughs> um, and it needs dealing with. Yeah, um, yeah, I I agree. I think it's really good. Um, the the way it's kind of come together and that's you know, that's not me bigging myself up it's as much about you guys as it's about me and you know what a special thanks to mike because uh mike um had to take a week off fortunately we found a good way to work it in but mike has been extraordinarily patient for the past couple of weeks in mostly hovering off camera over in glim and Band <laughs> while we've been doing the bulk of the role play um I, so a big thanks it. to mike for that because um a yeah. lot of players would um <laughs> would just get pissed <laughs> off um, In fairness, that, uh, so. based upon what you've been saying previously, Mike's uh, having to sideline Mike on this weird <laughs> subplot actually led to a, a, a much more effective ratcheting up of did. the tension. I think yeah. it genuinely did. I, I did see the opportunity there because, uh, like I say, as written, Baumelo A, dies off screen, 
Um, and well, he did die. So you know, I mean, you don't find his body or anything. And also, he's only introduced after he's already dead, essentially, as the, the, the you know, you just meet Odarko posing as Baumelo. Um, and I feel like for for various reasons, not all of which were ones that I'd come up with, it's kind of congealed together to actually make that subplot much more engaging, I think, and driving. Yeah. Um, and much more got, got you guys a bit more invested, I think. So yeah, I think I think as well, like that side mission worked out brilliantly because Anton isn't useful in combat, like yeah. nowhere near as effective in combat as as the other guys. So like it kind of made sense for for you know Anton to to, to go off and do his own and thing and, and stay away from the other group doing his own thing for a little bit longer. The one doing his own thing. Although you say that, but that that power of yours that affects abominations and undead that it's not bad being able to yeah. bypass armor completely is yeah. very strong and and it's, yeah, I, 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 really, I, I really appreciate how when i'm not there they fight abominations and <laughs> yeah, right. and when yeah. i'm there we don't fight those creatures yeah i'll, I'll carry on scheduling it like that I Thank think you. That's yeah. the <laughs> best. um cool well uh before we uh blow our own horn any longer um, it looks like we haven't got any any comments or questions in the chat, which is fine. It's just as they occur from people. Um, so again, a uh, massive thank you to John, as always, our excellent stream manager, for helping us out with everything tonight. Uh, big thanks to these wonderful players. Big thanks to Elle. Um, and um, yeah, big thanks to me as well, I guess. And nice we'll um, we'll see you next week <laughs> for more Simbaroom next Wednesday, 8 o'clock GMT, for the start of our next story arc. How exciting. Um, thank you, everyone. Uh, we hope you had a good evening, and goodbye. Bye-bye.